sneaked in and out of the bat. Yeah. Okay. So we're out here in the middle of nowhere Slap City and uh, as you all know, the economy is in shambles and there's a lot of homeless people out here uh, that are really struggling and so we thought it was a good day to come out, um, drop some food off. And by the way, I want to thank everybody who sent a dollar, two dollars or five dollars, what have you. I want to thank everybody for the great letters, uh, the positive encouragement. Uh, all the donations so it enables us to buy some dog food to pass out to the dogs buy some food a bunch of canned foods to, to drop off to people out here and unfortunately you know we can't film everybody a lot of people won't even take the food because uh, they, they have too much pride so we're certainly not gonna film everybody we give food to so that's our goal today pass out some dog food to, to the dogs out here because people love their animals pass out food to people who need it uh, because these people, uh, whether look, there's addiction problems out here, uh, there's fugitives out here, there's people with mental issues out here, there's people that come from domestic violence out here, uh, all types of issues out here. But you know what? These people are Americans, and they're not going to get a trillion dollar uh, bailout. Uh, they're not going to get multiple billions of dollars like the airlines are. Uh, there's people that don't want to be here, there's people who do want to be here, and there's people who can't get out of here. So uh, we thought we'd take some time in our day, take some of that uh, donation money, put it towards food, feed the dogs, feed some people, uh, just take some time out of our day, just give back a little bit. So thank you to all of you for the great letters, for the donations. We're going to put it to good use. God bless every one of you.
Well, yeah, I mean, as somebody who tries to generally get away from society, these things do sort of weigh heavily on me. And right. I think that the way that the government and the people in society are handling this is sort of strange with them yeah. uh, sort of alienating each other and feeling very alienated. Right, right. So everybody's kind of in panic mode now. Everything's shut down. These are issues that are much larger than any of us can face as individuals. And I do feel like just like the larger crisis of the past, we need to band together to try and solve this one. Right. I mean, during World War II, we all band together to defeat Hitler. And right. Now we're all separated hiding in our houses and and this sort of frightening yeah very frightening aspect right. of it right i mean i don't want this to get to a point where everyone is just reliant upon the government for their own survival right I mean, now I'm, this is pretty amazing I'm what you're literally you did here. trying to make it just on my own right. without any you know welfare no help. No or help. You're, you're, getting, you're getting no help at all well i mean other than what i can do for myself right. you know, i'm very capable but the government's person, not giving you money about that right exactly. but they're going to bail out big um corporations airlines <laughs> banks well, um, People may now have to adapt now with what we're seeing happen in the economy uh, and this infection that's going around. Th people may have to adapt a little bit more. Well, I think people in the cities, it might be more of a shock mm -hmm. um, in some ways, but yeah. in others, they're going to be very blessed. I mean, you think there's people out here who aren't living beyond their means. I think the vast majority of people out here are living beyond their means. I think their priorities are drugs. I think they don't take care of themselves. I think okay. they don't have a sustainable lifestyle, and they're a leech on the other people around here. So They don't have vehicles. They ride around. I mean, why are they shutting down our entire society, having, like, a quarantine? And, right. You know, but maybe there's a, a motive, an agenda to it. Well, I've thought, you know, on my own, you know, I have all these delusions about a larger world order beyond shut all the this. whole country down. Maybe they genetically engineered this virus and selected it amongst others for its specific lethality. Right, right, and right, right, <laughs> right. But, I mean, we, we've never seen the entire entire global economy shut down and well, now it's shut down the interesting thing about this coincidentally arriving with other world events is that we are already at a state where we know that the united states is in league for a financial collapse right been, so we're not going right. to emerge from this right. as the right. dominant world economy anymore who do you think will well, I mean, if you look at the way that China has been devaluing their currency over 50% for many, many years in order to basically screw their own populace over and deliver us cheap goods, mm -hmm. they're probably going to turn this into some sort of a propaganda event and then we'll ally with Russia and a bunch of these European mm -hmm. states to become the next large world so, financial order. interesting, that's where this whole infection came from. And now, in my opinion, it's going to just collapse the entire global economy into a depression but who who benefits from it? Well, it China will be China. Will be the first to recover, right? Because they've already dealt with it. Well, they have the too. factories, they have the manpower. Their citizens don't have a lot of debt. They have twenty thousand plus tons of gold. They have the infrastructure. They have the manufacturing capability. So when when things when the dust settles and everybody's desperate for goods, plastics, aluminums, cheap goods at Target and Walmart. Um, it's going to be the China. rare metals, too, because we've right. been selling them all our rare right. metals for right. a very long time right. at a very discounted so price. So w w when the lights come back on, China turns the, the factories back on, and they'll be producing more than ever because everybody's going to be desperate for goods, cheap goods and services from China. So we'll see how it all plays out. And their economy has largely already recovered from this yes. coronavirus thing yes. because they had like a four-month period where they were shut down. But yeah. they figured it out, and they're basically right. coming back to it. Right. The people who've already had it are basically immune over there already. Right. They know what it is. Right. Here it hasn't happened yet. Everybody's right. still in the freaking out stage. Right. And we're probably going to be dealing with this for another year. Interesting. I mean, the government says two months, but I really think yeah. within another year. And we'll be lucky if within a month they don't declare martial law and just shut yeah. down everything, and they just shoot you for being out at certain hours. Because yeah. honestly, like our government is dealing with this really yeah. badly. Yeah, it is are. shameful. No doubt. No doubt. We're turning into China. I mean, I'm like out here in the desert because I'm afraid of that stuff. I'm yeah. like 20 miles from the nearest Walmart and like yeah. 80 miles from the place where I get food right. because right. I don't want to have to deal with that stuff. Right. Right. And it's like, wow, you know how long is my water going to last? Can I really survive out here for two and a half months with like tweakers raining shit from my yard and people knowing I'm a person who has food and stuff? Yeah. Like, I really don't yeah. know. So need, here like, we are in the middle of nowhere <laughs> and, and, and you're worried. So, I mean, if you're in L.A., Chicago, Washington, D.C., Philadelphia, New York, when the lights go out and things get bad, imagine the element and the crime you're going to be dealing with in the urban cities because they are densely populated. Well, if you're seeing, you're very safe, see, too. See, you're, you're going to watch this from your television. Most people are going to be watching it from their uh, fr from their living room windows because it's going to be happening right in front of their house, right in their own neighborhood.
so I'm back home safe and sound this evening. I wanted to make this video today and share with all of you what is really happening in America and how many of you have it so well, uh, even though all of us are hurting because the global economy, the US economy is just shut down. Everybody's hurting, but there are people out there hurting a lot more than you and I, and there are gonna be more people hurting in the, in the near future here. Um, you know, the last time I was out at Slab City, there was about 500 people out there. I would estimate today that there was well over 2,000 people uh, living out in the Imperial County Desert here in Southern California. And yes, uh, there are people with drug addictions out there. Uh, there are people out there uh, who have had bad luck. There are people out there who have mental disorders. Uh, and there's just people out there that are just good people uh, who don't know what to do. They've run out of opportunity. They don't have family members to fall back on. They've lost a job. Uh, they've had to pay medical bills. They've become bankrupted and some bad luck. And there you are, um, people living in cars, in shacks, in tents, in dilapidated campers. You know, we have it so well and we take so many things for granted. You know, if you had a, a, a hot meal today, if you have a roof over your head, you are better off than 90 some odd percent of the world. And you're certainly better off than the people out there who live in the middle of the desert with frigid cold temperatures at night in the winter and triple digit 120 degree plus weather in the summertime. So, you, you know, something told me that I needed to go out and do something good uh, over the last week. For the last week, something uh, just said, hey, I need to get off my butt get out there and, and, you know, get some food and water to people, go feed some of the dogs out there. You know, the, the animals really tug at my heart. It's a really sensitive issue with me. Um, so, you know, we went out there today, uh, and, and delivered some food, some water and, and some clothes. So, you, you know, everybody asks, what can we do? Well, go help some people who need some help because your church is pretty much forgotten about, the homeless. So I went out there, did that today, and, and I'm glad I did. And um, just really heart-wrenching uh, what we're seeing happening in this country. And I printed out some notes today. Uh, these people aren't going to get a bailout. They're going to get no help. They've been forgotten about. But I made some notes today that you know, people right here now in America that had a job uh, that are getting unemployment or will get unemployment, they're going to get an additional $600. Depending on the state, that's going to go 12 to 28 weeks uh, with a 13-week extension. So we're living in a country now that will pay you more money to stay at home than to go to work. Uh, but the question is, what is going to happen uh, after the four months of unemployment? What's going to happen after the extension? Uh, Social Security recipients will also receive a stimulus check of $1,200. Anyone with a, a Social Security number qualifies. Uh, 500, uh, we have a $500 billion lending program. The Treasury Department can provide $500 billion in loans, loan guarantees, and investments that, spe uh, that specially includes that specifically includes 25 billion dollars for passenger airlines 4 billion for uh, uh, cargo uh, air carriers 17 billion dollars for businesses that work in national security uh, the rest of the funds the 454 billion dollars are given wide latitude to provide loans to businesses states and municipalities uh, airlines uh, the airline package will be $32 billion, it includes $32 billion in grants for wages and benefits uh, to the decimated airline industry. And what's interesting is already this afternoon, they were saying it wasn't enough money, they need more money. Um, and after the grants, uh, after the date that the grant expires, they're just gonna lay off a bunch of people. So 
uh, just more shenanigans. Uh, hospitals get billions. The bill creates $100 billion for public health and, so, and social emergency fund to reimburse providers for expenses and lost revenue related to uh, this infection. About $65 billion will go to hospitals. $25 billion uh, will go to the Kennedy Center. $500 billion will go to the Peace Corps uh, and diplomatic programs and refugees. How's that? Uh, unbelievable. So um, $500 billion going uh, partially to refugees. I'm looking at Americans sleeping in cardboard boxes, tents, uh, in their cars, in campers, um, right here an hour from my house. These people will receive zero. They've been forgotten about, but they are U.S. citizens, but they don't matter. The IRS is going to be getting at least 250 million dollars to extend the tax season and implement uh, status relief. Casinos will qualify for government loans. Larger ca casinos ca can, can apply for up to $450 billion. The General Service Administration's Federal Building Fund will receive $275 million to deep clean federal facilities. Social Security Administration receives $300 million to help keep up with the workload. The United States Postal Service receives a $10 billion line of credit. Federal contractors will receive boatloads of money. So $2.2 trillion today, stock market down 950 points. Uh, it almost seems like the medicine is wearing off. $2.2 trillion today in a stimulus package, stock market down 950 points. Uh, $350 billion will go, will go to small business. Where's the rest of the money going? Well, I just gave you a short list of where some of it's going. What a waste. What a waste. What does any of this have to do, for the most part, with the American citizen who is going absolutely broke. Uh, it looks like special interests, big business, corporations, airlines, um, certain industries, certain groups are gonna get massive amounts of money while they're gonna send you some crumbs, like $1,200. We know there's another two, four, six, eight, ten trillion dollars $10 trillion coming it, it's, it's going to infinity. Uh, this is why I believe that this is unsustainable and why we're, why we're past the point of no return. You know, there's people out there saying the Fed's going to take over the world, the Fed's taking over the U.S. Um, I don't know how they're going to do it with the massive hyperinflation that's coming when the U.S. dollar is going to collapse, while the economy is going to collapse. Uh, I don't know how much strength and how much power the Federal Reserve is going to have when they completely bust the U.S. dollar, when it is Zimbabwe-like. When we reach the point of Zimbabwe, Venezuela, uh, the, Federal Reserve is, the, balance, the Federal Reserve balance sheet now is exceeding $5.5 trillion, and that's not even including the mortgage-backed securities that they're purchasing. Uh, this is astronomical, and we see again today, almost a 1,000 points down on the Dow. Uh, it looks like these artificial injections, the 0% the interest rates, were going negative. It's not working, and it's not going to work. Look, people are hurting. The dollar is going to go bust. The economy is going to go bust, and at some point, the Federal Reserve is not going to have any more resources. They're going to have no more magic tricks. And we're going to be in a really, really bad, bad situation here. But a situation where we're going to have to do something. We're going to need a currency. If it is going to be the US dollar, we're going to need a currency backed by gold. We need something that is real. Uh, I think we're going to reach a point where people and the world are no longer going to have faith in the currency. Uh, people are no longer going to have faith uh, in the central banks uh, saving them. Look, it's the central banks that created this mess. It's the central banks that create recessions. They create depressions. They bankrupt economies. And they are going to do the same right here. And I believe truly that this central bank, the Federal Reserve, may be on borrowed time. 
Uh, I read an article today, Red Cross, talking about the unrest that we meet, may start to see in our cities across the world, including right here in America, where people are going to be starving, where people are going to need real help. $1,200 is nothing. Um, if people are not working uh, and we start seeing hyperinflation, uh, really stagflation, where people have no jobs, they're not working, uh, and their dollar is buying less and less, uh, the economy is completely stagnant, um, we're going to see some real problems, especially in the cities here in America. Uh, and, and, you know, this video today, look, it's another example, uh, first off, why we are so blessed, why we have so much to be grateful for. Look, there's a lot of blame we can throw around right now. Federal Reserve, the government, the economy, you know, it goes on and on and on. This thing is so complicated and so interconnected. There's so many people, politicians uh, and groups to blame for where we're at. But at the end of the day, right now, uh, we don't have time to blame somebody. We have got to be responsible for ourselves and where this is all heading. Uh, we're not going to be able to control. We are literally riding the wave. And you've got to be prepared for the worst case scenario because the worst case scenario looks like it is coming. Uh, and that is going to be a massive uh, Great Depression right here in America. And so right now, uh, we cannot take the time or the energy to be blaming entities such as politicians and banks and central banks and businesses and whatnot, and special interests. Right now, you've got to be preparing for the worst case scenario. You need to be taking care of yourselves mentally, physically, spiritually, and financially. Look at those people out there today. Look how they are living. Newsflash, there's going to be a lot more people living like that right here in America, okay? These are beyond third world conditions. Um, more people are going to be homeless here in America. And, you know, this is why I never judge or make fun of people who have it bad, who are homeless. And, I, and you know, I go on social media, I see people making fun of people like that. Um, look, there are people that have serious issues, problems, mental disorders, addictions. Uh, they come from families where they've been abused. Uh, they come from marriages where they've been abused, uh, you know, people who've been molested. And, and there's people out there who are educated, who had jobs, who just hit some bad luck. You know, the healthcare system in America, you, you know, can bankrupt you in a matter of days. And you know, you get some bad luck and you don't have anything to fall back on. Uh, you don't have family. And that's a big thing. When you don't have family members to fall back on a unit, uh, you can easily land up in a situation like this. And you know what? Those people out there, they have it better off than other homeless people. You go to Skid Row in Los Angeles. Wow. It's not even close. You'd be, you'd pray that you were living out there in the desert. Uh, it gets even worse. There are areas, uh, like Skid Row in Los Angeles that it is literally a war zone. So even they have it better off than other people. You know, it's so important, you know, for every one of us to take a moment and thank God upstairs for blessing us, for keeping us safe, for keeping food on the table, for keeping the lights on. Um, and for some people, uh, their standard of living is about ready to change. So make sure that you are preparing. Make sure you are walking close to God. You know, this we're entering a time now where we're going to see the divorce rate increase. We're going to see suicide increase, drug addiction, alcoholism, uh, PTSD. All this is going to increase anxiety. It's going to uh, somehow every one of us is going to be affected by what is taking place with this economy. So. It's really, really important that, you know, if you have a family unit to stay close, uh, if you have good friends, stay close, have, have a unit, have that bond. Um, and, and most of all, make sure you're walking close to God. Make sure you're giving God a, a, a thank you for what he's blessed you with and pray to God and walk close to God and, and ask him to protect you uh, because we're, we are just entering this collapse. So make sure that you, you are praying to God on a daily basis to protect you and to guide you. We need God now more than, uh, than ever. And if we don't have God in this country, 
Um, we are not going to have a country. So this is a wake-up call. Uh, some, we've all gotten complacent. We've all gotten a little lazy, you know, physically, mentally, spiritually. Uh, and so this is a wake-up call to, to take a couple minutes and thank God for what you have and take a couple minutes to ask God to protect you, your family, and guide you. Uh, you know, it's also the time to, you know, get in better physical shape. It's been the time to get in better financial shape, to, to hunker down, be small. This is no time to be making purchases of homes or cars or big screen TVs. This is the time to hunker down and be small. This economy is going to be changing on a dime and you need to change with it. If you don't, uh, if you're carrying a lot of debt because you got to have toys in a big house, uh, there are going to be people that are going to be absolutely ruined by the devastation of this collapse. So make sure that mentally, physically, spiritually, and financially, you are hunkering down um, and getting ready for the biggest economic tsunami America has ever seen. Look, we have never seen volatility like this. Uh, we, we are at a crisis here in America. We have massive bubbles that are getting ready to burst. And we have got social, political, and economic issues unlike we have ever seen in the history of America. I'm going to leave it there this evening. Have a great weekend. Um, and just really take the time to thank God and tell all your family members you love them. This is the time to, that family and friends really need to come together. You need a strong unit. We are going to see things we have never seen happen in our country. And the stronger uh, your unit is, uh, and that bond with your family and friends, the better chance you're going to have to survive this. God bless every one of you. Have a wonderful weekend. Share this video with everybody. Thanks for all the prayers, the letters, the donations. I couldn't do this without all of you. God bless every one of you.